Afternoon, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to a 2020 election prediction where I don't know who I'm going to pick today. Well, actually, yes, I do. We're going to take a, we're going to talk about um, an election prediction between Donald Trump, the Republican, and John Delaney, the representative from uh, Maryland. So actually, let's go ahead and select him. And John, the reason why we're doing John Delaney is because, well, he is literally um, the only, I'm going to say he's the first Democrat to truly um, declare, though a few Democrats I'm pretty sure, though there are a few I think are almost certain to run, um, Delaney's the only one who has declared, and he declared in 2017, um, fairly early on in 2017, so, yeah, there's that, and the reason why we're doing this is we're just going to go through, and we're going to start doing some predictions, because I went through all my swing states, and, well, don't have anything super better to do, um, in the next couple of days, I'm going to be kind of breaking apart each... I'm also going to be breaking apart each major party, uh, Democrats and the Republicans, talking about their strengths and their weaknesses, um, some problems I think they both have, and how they can improve themselves and become the best version of themselves that they can be. Um, I may also do that for the Libertarians, the Greens, and maybe some other parties, I'm not sure. Actually, I will do it for the Libertarians and the Greens as well as maybe some ideological groups within those parties. For example, the Tea Party, um, the progressive wing of the Democrat Party, stuff, you know, groups like that. But we're going to start with uh, this election prediction. I'm going to get rid of states that would be between 6 and 10 percent for Trump as well as get rid and John Laney as well as get rid of states I think would be beyond that. New Mexico for example, Iowa, Ohio, Georgia. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I really do think Trump's floor is Romney 2012 plus Iowa and Ohio, but the other reason I'm doing this is because this is kind of based off of, again, my swing state analysis and predictions like that. And I want to make sure I clear everything up. Yeah, so this is probably what the actual swing state map will look like. Um, <clears throat> and John Delaney, from what I can tell, he's a liberal... Or... Eh... It's always a weird term compared to the rest of the world. American politics, political language is weird. Um, he's kind of, I think, slightly farther to the left than Pelosi, but without the Pelosi sliminess. Um, he's kind of your generic liberal, to be honest. I'm not sure how that's going to play... The only problem is he doesn't have name recognition. I think a lot of people are going to say, who the hell is John Delaney when they click on this video? Um, I actually had to do some digging to find his voting record, um, which is what you'd expect, to be honest, for a Maryland Democrat. Um, so, honestly, I think that name recognition is going to hurt him. And even if he wins the primary, he's not going to have the name recognition that say, that Donald Trump will. And Trump's approval ratings seem to be consistent in the mid-40s. Um, and I don't think that's going to change unless something drastic happens between now and 2020, which it could, it could, it could. Don't, you know, don't put words in my mouth saying, oh, that's, that, that, that's, not going to happen, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, so, 
Anyway. With that said, we're going to go ahead and start getting rid of some other states. Um, hmm, this is tough. It depends on who the vice presidential pick is going to be, but I'm going to give Virginia to Delaney. Um, simply based off of name recognition, I'm giving Trump New Hampshire. And also... Uh, the statewide vote in Maine. I think that's a reasonable amount to give him due to name recognition. Uh, due to turnout of the base, I'm going to give Trump North Carolina. North Carolina is a turnout swing state um, where you're not trying to convince moderates to vote for you. You're trying to convince your base that you're conservative or liberal enough or that you're you know Republican enough or Democrat enough. Um, and that's true of most southern states that is their turnout based. <clears throat> With exceptions in certain weird instances like Roy Moore losing in Alabama because he's pederast. Um, I honestly think that's the only reason he lost. Um, matter of fact, I know it's the only reason he lost. And I'm glad he lost because he's a pederast. Um, anyway, Colorado, I'm going to give to Delaney, um, Arizona is going to go to Trump, I'll come back to Nevada, uh, Wisconsin, I'm going to give to Trump. Pennsylvania is going to be close. I'll come back to I'll come back to these three states. Florida, I think, would vote for Trump as the incumbent, and well, that puts Trump over the top. But I think that's beside the point right now. Um, I think Minnesota would be too soon, and Delaney's just enough of a Democrat that I think he would be able to hold it. Um, though name recognition might sink him in Pennsylvania, though he's from Maryland, so Pennsylvanians probably heard of him. And he might be able to convince uh, the Philly area to turn out in higher numbers. Um, but I think to be on, uh, I think I'm going to give Trump benefit of the doubt due to uh, incumbency. Michigan is this really weird state. I'm going to give that to Delaney. And then Nevada, I think I'm also going to give to Delaney. So, uh, according to this, Trump is outperforming in New Hampshire and Maine. And Delaney outperforms in Nevada. So, we've got, again, Trump just under 300. Delaney's actually improved over Clinton. Um, but... Yeah, that's that's about where I'd expect the map to be for Delaney versus Trump, simply because of name recognition. Um, if Delaney were much more well known, I'm sure the map would look different, and we'd be able to get a much more accurate representation. Um, again, as with all of my predictions, any state in the lightest shades. Um, could go the other direction, and any state in these slightly darker shades can become closer or even in some rare circumstances flip, and certain states that are even the darkest shade can become competitive. Um, remember, this is just a what I think is the most likely outcome. Um, not what I think is the guaranteed outcome. And the lightest shades are races I'd expect to be closer than 5%, probably closer than 3%. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you, you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.